of time to just quickly chat about a few of these things. Organisational ecology, by which we mean how the networks within which companies interact with each other and within themselves. Yeah. So you'd be looking, I'd be looking for how, how they leverage successful outcomes for themselves from within those networks. Um, uh, will the cafe within the gallery close within two years because nobody's prepared to spend money on coffee? Or you know, what makes those things to happen? Who's the, yeah, that's a very good point. Who has the dominant role? Who has the power in those relationships? What other things could be added to that network which might add value, which might increase the uh, either the engagement from the person at their place or the amount of money they spend. You know? So should should the cafe have an alcohol license as well? What, what does that do to the customer experience? Does that make it better or worse? Should you be able to buy your train ticket with, with um, entry to the museum or gallery as well? You know, that kind of thing. Um, governance is particularly, I think it's particular arts organisations now, which is what I think of it as meaning how the board operates. Uh, again, it's about the roles and responsibilities of those board members. Uh, and, uh, you know, an interesting topic is, is what level of governance does an organisation need? You know, I'm working with a very small arts organisation at the moment, you know, only one or two people. And some key advice they've got was, oh, there's only four people on your board. It has to be at least seven. Like, why? Why does it have to be seven? Why isn't it a four-people board? Why isn't that enough for the right sort of organisation? Um, so having to think about what the needs of an organisation are and what that means for their board uh, and how they go about sourcing board members, that's always important. Uh, risk management could be very important for organisations which involve um, customer interaction, customer safety, uh, what sort of um, risks they put under. What sort of new risks that people under? What about cyber hacking? What about um, hacking cyber as well? What about cyber terrorism? What about real life terrorism? You know? Interesting. You're talking about risk management. It'd be interesting to take a new angle on it and think about some of those more out there things which people might need to consider which they're not considering at the moment. Funding, funding for arts organisations. You know, the problem with this one is that it's always the same old story. So it's always, funding is always decreasing as a share of the organisation's revenue. They always have to fill it for something else. It's not a situation which isn't going to change. Um, so you could look at it from the point of view about alternatives to government funding and where an organisation might spend their resources on doing that. Uh, or you could, you could look at it from the point of what are the, um, uh, how government policy, how changing government policy might affect uh, an organisation's ability to attract funding. You know, if we do a Bill Henson exhibition, does that mean we don't get our Australian Council funding next year? What are the kind of what are the kind of political and uh, environmental pressures around that? Um, change management in terms of organisational change actually is a very good topic to think about about how an organisation's functional unit should be structured. How many people should be in sales? How many people should be in production? How many people should be in back and house? What is the right organisational structure for an organisation? That's great. Artistic program, though. You're going to talk about artistic program? <coughs> Organizations, one of the difficulties is, you know, I was talking about how kids start cycle through arts organizations before. It's the same for artistic leadership in those organizations. One artistic director is going to take it in a different direction to, to another. So I suppose, you know, maybe an interesting angle is to think about the company's brand and what that means for its artistic leadership. You know, is if, if, it, if, if it's a heritage arts, arts company which does kind of classic pieces and and makes a lot of money out of that. What happens when there's a sudden change in the artistic um, emphasis? If you like? What does that mean for? What are the risks involved? You know? uh, yeah, it's an interesting one. Or alternatively, where what's, where's it going wrong? You know, should it be looking? Should it be looking to tour work? Should it be taking international? Where are the markets for that? 
you're in, you know, if you're in children's entertainment, right, and you're touring around New South Wales or something, what are you doing for the US one? What are you doing for the Southeast Asian one? Those are kind of ramifications on the business level that artistic programming might have. It's very interesting. I'll quickly talk about what I think you should do in general. I think that you should demonstrate an understanding of how the organisation works. I think you should demonstrate an understanding of the external drivers, that should say, on the organisation. So political, economic, social, technological. You should be able to, to show how those things are impacting on the um, your analysis should be sound and supported by evidence, not like all the gut I've just talked about. You should actually have some data behind it to, to show why what you're suggesting, particularly when you get to the recommendation stage, it should be supported by evidence to show how you come to that conclusion. But as I've just said, you should make your recommendation should make sense based on the analysis and they should be feasible. You can't suggest something which is never going to happen or is outside the budget. You know, it's got to be something which an organisation can actually put into place. Uh, and in general, I suggest you put yourself in the CEO's shoes, in the general manager's shoes, and say, all right, if it was me, what would I do? Uh, not a bad exercise to go through, once you think about what steps you take and why. That is it for me. That is all I have to say. Um, so, thank you for listening to me. You can contact me by emailing me at dsharp.com.au uh, or you can follow me on Twitter at Sharp and um, say something interesting and I will say something interesting back. Hopefully. Does anyone have any questions about anything I've said? Very good. Go ahead. Have fun. Thanks very much.